hello hello guys welcome back to boss TV. how have you been guys i've been okay i've been good i've been great so today is friday which means it's murder mystery with linda so i am linda here if you have not subscribed please subscribe to my video and if you have thank you guys because you always make me come here again and again and i appreciate it so who are, those who have not subscribed please remember to subscribe to like to share and to also comment down on the, the comment section below and just give me the you know give me maybe the topics you like me to discuss about and i always appreciate your 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 comments because they always keep me going so guys let's start so our story for today is about a, a, a girl by the name zara baker have you ever heard of her have you ever i know you haven't that's why i'm here I search everything for you and I bring it on your on your living room and you enjoy story time with Linda. So guys, today here yeah, that's the story. It's typically as an evil stepmother story. You guys, by the how do you think? Uh, what do you feel about the evil evil stepmother stories that you uh, I hear? Because they're not. It's not a one story. It's they are all over. Like stepmothers have been stereotyped or maybe branded as bad people. What do you think, guys? I don't have something to say about it because I have my own story, but I'm not ready to, to like give you what my story is. Maybe one day I will. So, guys, let's step to our, our story for today. So, Zara Becker was born in on 16th June 1999 by her mother by the name Emily and her father Adam Becker. So, she was she was this happy little girl and uh, the mother went through who is now the mother emily went through severe postpartum depression guys so side side note what do you think about um this um postpartum depression i've never gone through it so i'm not going to to talk about a brave a river i've never swimmed in so, uh, a river that I've never swimmed in. So guys, if you've been there, please guys, comment down below and tell me what it feels like, what it is like. Is it, you know, generally, how does it feel? I want a perspective on somebody who has actually been there. So, he, she went through a severe, and I mean severe, postpartum depression. And it, I, I'm, I'm going to put, uh, you know, like, uh, at something that she said about her postpartum depression that what it was it was it is like was men mentally torturing her so i'll give it I'll, I'll put it for you guys here so you can see what she said about it and when she was going through all these things in her body or maybe a, 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 a mental and everything else she decided to give adam this girl because she felt like he was the best person to take care of this child and I applaud her because at least she understood the situation and she was able to let go of the child. Because for a mother to let go of a baby is not an easy thing. Ask me, I'll tell you because I've been there also. Okay, what have I not been in? I've been there. I've been there everything. So, so like when all this was happening, like the postpartum and all these crazy things happening in her life, she gave her child to the ma the father Adam, Adam Becker now and. Adam Becker took this kid because Adam Becker lived with his parents at this point. And so she, he took this child to his parents where he also lived. And the parents were ready to take care of the baby, the grandparents now. And after a while, they decided to move to Queensland where she had found a job there. So they were, he, mo he moved with the family there and they were working there and, you know, Everything was just working because everybody loved Zara, everybody cared about Zara, and Zara was never alone. He was typically a happy little baby. So all this time, everything okay, everything going smooth, everything good for Zara. And at, at a certain point in her life, she, she was diagnosed with bone cancer. Oh God, guys, I've heard that bone cancer is the most painful cancer because it affects the bones. And you know, bones are the, literally what makes us move around. So if your bones are being affected by something, I think it's the, like the hardest thing for you to like uh, deal with, especially if you're a child who doesn't even understand what the hell is ailing you. So she was diagnosed with that and it was so severe that she reached a point her leg so one of her legs was amputated and after a while again she was diagnosed with lung cancer oh god okay this this cancer issue cancer disease was just after this girl like all her life i can say so when she went through when she was diagnosed with lung cancer she she had to go to chemotherapy to and uh, you no know, part of her lung was removed and after part of her lung was removed now she was going through 
very 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 extreme chemotherapy this extreme chemotherapy actually made her go through she lost some of her earring you can see her being put some some earring aid over here so guys now she, she has a prostrate leg up i don't know i don't know if that's the, the like the right way to like uh, pronounce it and an earring aid oh guys so this girl is actually going through so much so so much as far as her health is concerned and uh, you know I, I don't know guys what do you think like ugh, it was so much well, let me just put it that way so when all this was actually happening she's ailing she's going through all this and the father was feeling lonely lonely and lonelier every day so she, he decided now he decided to go to now adam he decided to go for you know this way dating sites to to you know find somebody for himself which now that's when he went he came across uh alisa and alisa was in america and you know they started talking talking like this first first time and all this stuff this just uh you know digital talk digital communication they did it for a while and uh they they kind of just clicked and um Alisa visited, visited uh, Australia to in Queensland to go and visit Adam and the daughter. And when they, when uh, Alisa, when Alisa met uh, Zara, they clicked like, shoo. And, uh, you know, Adam was happy. You know, he felt like I have found the perfect woman who is going to, to, to like replace or, or they take place of a mother for my daughter. And actually for me also, I would feel that way if I found, I found somebody who clicked with my children and, uh, it's 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 somehow warms somebody's heart somebody who has children let's just say a parent so when all this is happening you know there's some some like lies that have been happening between alisa and adam apparently alisa had told adam that she was rich yeah she had some chums and she could actually take care of them so alisa convinced adam that they that they should uh, fly to america so they can start a family over there and adam was not hesitant because of the fact that they actually had uh, she had seen he had seen the click between him between her and his daughter and she fe he felt like there's no really there's no problem as to um, there's no reason for me to review refuse because the 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 biggest issue that could be there is my daughter but now that they have clicked whatever so he flew he packed up uh, no before he packed his bags the parents were really hesitant about the whole situation because in australia the medical care the medical uh, expenses for elisa uh, for for zara becker were free and if they flew back if they flew to america they'll have to pay for all, for all the medical expenses which was very very expensive guys but that thing made uh, you know but when alisa volunteered and said that she will be footing the bills for zara when they are in america then what else to you know like they had no reason to really not agree for them to fly to america so when they reached america that's when everything blew up guys everything blew up because now everything was coming up to, out to light and uh, number one there's so many secrets that adam never knew number one of the number one is that alisa was not as rich as she claimed to be so adam had to really go out there and hustle and you know work his ass out and make a living to protect his daughter as far as medication is concerned and food you know just footing all the bills including the medical bills that alisa had said she'll foot number two alisa never did not have good relation had three kids which he did not know when no he knew but he really did not know that alisa was not living with the kids but apparently alisa now the the, the dark secret about this is alisa had did not have a good did not have good relationship with the kids i wonder why really why i mean if you cannot have a good relationship with the kids i wonder who you have good relationship with i think that should have sent her, him some red flag but hey love in and like who's love love will blind you blind you and make you look like the idiot that you are so that's the secret number one is that she was not as rich as she claimed number two she had not she did not have a good relationship with the daughters or not daughters but children because i don't i i never this i've not seen where they're saying the gender of the children and number three 
she had been married seven times yes people seven good times i mean i'm not saying it's bad to leave a marriage i mean if it's not working it's not working but seven times honey what's your problem like hmm, something is there's something you're not saying and apparently there's a man who was visiting their home who who who, who we who now adam came to know that was the step not step but the ex-husband it's not ex because they had not even divorced who was the husband to alisa and yet alisa told adam that the, that it was the brother and again why would you get married to a person without knowing even his family like who are his family or the names of the family with the and like what, what marriage what, what was this marriage like how did you guys get married like that was my, one thing that asked me if you don't even know their relatives what kind of marriage was how how did you get married i don't even know so those are the red lights that i felt that adam could have seen and like who run run like who run but he did not run he just uh, continued so when they reached america like shortly they got married so now they were married and they had us their small sweet family i mean if you marry somebody that you love somebody that you you trust somebody that you feel you can have a future with you don't just wake up and marry somebody although he made the worst decision of his life so when all this is happening he goes out there looking for work, he goes there busting his ass off, just looking for a job, you know, doing all the weird jobs. You remember he's not a citizen, I'm an American citizen, so he cannot get the best of jobs. He will work under the desk, you know, all those things that just getting small cash. You will not even be paid like any normal city Af American citizen. So all this is happening. This guy Adam is working 24/7, 90% of the time. Adam, nani, Zara Baker is with uh, Alisa, and you can, and you know Alisa. Or, uh, Alisa at this point things had started because now Zara was enrolled in a school, and uh, every time she went to school, she was uh, she, the, the teachers used to see bumps on his head, on her head, maybe a black eye, you know, things, small small things that were happening. And sometimes Zara would talk, you know, kids talk. I mean, kids can say something intentionally for you to catch some you know for you to get a glimpse of what exactly is happening so she used to say some things here and there sometimes she, she will come with a black eye sometimes a bum in the head you know meaning like something was not right at home so the the teachers called on the child protective services they did a welfare and they never found anything this child protective protective services people by the way i don't know i don't we don't i, I don't really know if we have these things in kenya but well, I don't think because I've never had personal CJ skia. So, all these things happening and Zara going through so much and so much torture. Even the neighbors complained that they they could hear her, Alisa now, screaming at Zara. Walk faster. Stop pretending. You know, you can hear me talk. You remember, she has hearing aid. So, her hearing is not that 100%, you know, she can hear, yes, but not 100%. And I feel this woman could have taken it slow on this woman, this lady, this child, because you decided for her to come to America. Why are you making her through, go through the, all that? And when all this suffering is happening with Zara, Zara could not talk a lot about what was happening to her because I think she was trying to protect herself because now she knew 90% or maybe 95% of the time she spent with uh, with uh, Alisa and if she said anything she might she might be punished at the absence of everybody else because people might talk out there but what happens when the curtains are raised what happens when the door is locked you are the two of you and you guys you know this child could end up suffering the you know she could she can go through something and nobody will notice can even be killed because this is not her mother and the stepmothers honey stepmothers they are not your people they are born from a very different, different, different world. Like hey, their way of uh, treating people is wild. So all this time, when all this is happening, and uh, I'm just wondering, where is the father? Doesn't he come home to sleep? Doesn't he come home and greet the child now, Zara, and see what's happening with her daughter? 
you know it it infuriates me because you are the mother and the father as much as this is the stepmother she she can never have a hundred percent care for your child the way the real mother could so you have to be the mother and the father try to monitor your child and see what's going on if you've decided to bring this alien into your family that's why I told you in my other videos, be very careful you bring next to your children because you don't know the kind of alien you've brought. So when all this suffering is happening, Zara is going through much, the father is, is working his ass off, has forgotten even if even that he has kids, you know. I felt like he just forgot. He just forgot he has a kid, you know. He just went there, all his mind, soul, body is all about work. I took care of you know it was it was all about work 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 you know he, he forgot all about his 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 baby who's who was Zara Baker and Zara Baker was going through so much behind the curtains because if neighbors were actually complaining of what they experienced or what they saw Alisa take take her through just outside you can imagine what was happening behind closed doors you know it's it has to be much more than what is happening out there. So when all this was happening, a day came like this, uh, one uh, around uh, this a day that um, there was a fire, a fire just broke up, <laughs> a fire, not broke up, broke out. There's a fire that broke out uh, at their backyard and they called the police, which was 911. And uh, apparently even Adam called the police at that moment. And when the police came, they 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 investigated the fire and they saw that they felt or maybe so or maybe concluded that it was an arson guys remember i told you on my previous video the pre the video that i was giving you crime terminologies arson is where by somebody set something on fire by purpose and and uh, the the investigators felt that this fire actually was uh, was intentionally intentionally put up you know, you know, like or lit out. You know, the fire was actually somebody just put uh, put the fire there intentionally. And <clears throat> next to the fire, there was this car, which was Adam's car. It, it not actually his car, but a car that he used to use, which was his boss's car. There was an, an a note there, not really a letter, but a note that said that we'll get for we'll get we, we'll get your son. And at the, if you don't, you know, if you don't, I, you know, there's something that they're not, something like a threat. And uh, when when uh, when it happened like that, they they were saying that they get the son. Now apparently Zara, no, Zara is not a, is not a boy, and uh, apparently Adam didn't have a son. So Adam Baker concluded that the person who put the letter there or the note there actually thought that. It was it was it was the 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 boss's residential area, and that's why I put there because the boss had uh, girls uh, a mixture of both gender in the house as far as his kids were concerned. So he thought that actually the person who put the note there thought that that was the boss's residential area because the car was uh, the car that was outside was the boss's car. So when all this was happening, nobody really know why you know. You know, the boss was actually called and asked if, they, if all his kids were okay, and they, he said they were okay, nobody was taken. So, when all this was happening, the next day now, the next day, Adam calls the police, 911 again, saying that Zara was missing. And uh, the police came to search with, with their cadaver, cadaver dogs. Do you know what a cadaver dog is, guys? A cadaver dog is a dog that can be able to, to smell a dead body even if the dead body isn't there they can actually give you the actual you know they can smell things and tell you if something is blood not just blood but blood from a dead person things like that's why cadaver cadaver is just like a dead it's it's uh, another name for a dead body and uh, when the the dogs came out, the cadaver dogs came. They sniffed out some uh, some dead flesh somewhere. You no, know, in the, in both uh, Adam's car and uh, and um, Alisa's car. And uh, when they were uh, really asked where Zara was, they did not say no. Like Adam said, he has been working. He didn't know where Zara was. And um, the same thing to Alisa. Even though Alisa was the same person. Who, who was in charge of Zara all this time because Adam was busy working. So when all these things were happening, Zara, Nani, Alisa was was uh, arrested. 
you know, not really because of the disappearance of Zara, but because of other reasons. Apparently, there was other things that were happening behind the camera. So all the camera was behind the story, the story behind the story, and he was, she was arrested. Now, when she was arrested, she was interrogated there in the, at the at the you know at the police station or maybe the the prison jail whatever and when he was, she was being arrested you no know, she was being questioned she was also questioned about uh, zara and she said that she said that zara she you no know, she came home one she said she said that she came home one day and found zara not breathing not responding just lying on lying there and she tried to revive him like with the, like for 30 minutes and she she did not succeed and when she she finally noticed that Zara was dead she called she called now Adam from work and told her, told him what had happened Adam ran home took uh, took uh, took uh, Zara's body to the bathroom and closed the bathroom door and now Z Alisa is saying that she did not know what was happening inside the bathroom because that Adam had locked the door apparently inside there Adam was dismembering Ali Nani, Zara's body into pieces and putting it in trash bags oh my god guys oh my god like I'm not the only person who is scared of, of dead people like I'm scared of like even if your friend my friend they talk to you and you die right now all of a sudden i just i'm scared of you i can't get near you but the fact that somebody can go as far as dismembering somebody's body putting it into into trash bags whew, this uh, this is a whole new level of what the f like it's even your daughter again i, I don't know like what the what the f and when the, when he did all that they they put the pieces pieces of Zara body. Oh my God, it's been so disgusting just saying it. And put them in the in 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 the car, and you know just they went on a throwing spree. They just throwing them all over the place, and um, and when all this, this all this thing happened, I forgot to tell you guys when the police were searching, they found the 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 artificial leg for Zara. That's when they noticed something more sinister, something more more monster most or what can i say something worse had happened to her so when they found the leg so when now when now they had thrown the bodies and all this now this is uh this is um alisa saying the story saying what had they, what had actually happened and they called in adam Adam came and said that he did not know what Zara was. It was what Alisa was saying, because he was working all this time. That Alisa was saying that they were throwing Zara's body all over, body parts all over the place. And when they started searching, like doing the, you know, seeing the location of their phones when all these things was happening, actually, Alisa's phone pinged. Pinging is, you know, that, you know, that. Um, something red when it clicks and showing somebody where the location of something it pinged where the body the body parts were found but adam's phone pinged at where he was working so it was, it, there was so much confusion if actually he left the maybe he left the the phone at work and went without the phone or maybe he was not there Alisa did all this by herself, but apparently I don't think there's a way that Alisa could do all this work all by herself because it was too much work and you know, you just need an alibi in all this, and I don't know whether the alibi was is it the ex husband or the husband who, who she was lying and saying it was his her brother, is it the the husband now the Zara's husband Zara's father? I really don't know who did it, but what I know is that somebody assisted this lady, is this a lady even this monster this evil stepmother in doing all this? It it's either the Zara's father or his or or Alisa's ex husband whoever it was but somebody did assist this woman so Zara <clears throat> actually uh, so Alisa was arrested and she she's bound to get out in 2025 and um Adam flew back to Australia and is still living with his kids with, with no kids with his parents and apparently even in Australia where he lives every time he goes out doing his errands and doing you know you have to you cannot stay at home all the time you have to go out there and do your thing people call him a murderer so we still really don't know 
who assisted in the mother of this young young child who really struggled so hard to survive in life and then somebody just out of nowhere just came and and just snipped you know like just drew life out of out of her within a short while when she has been struggling with her life struggling to stay alive and then somebody just comes and takes it away from her i think guys this is a whole lesson for us all for us parents think before you enter into a relationship especially a parent who uh, uh, a pass a part a person who already has a child be very careful who you bring into your life be very careful because whoever whoever you bring into your life you bring into your child's life so be very careful. Be very careful and mindful of the people around you. People are so evil, you know. People can pretend they are the best thing that you ever happened to you, and when in real sense they are waiting to 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 you know to like draw you into their system and then destroy you or maybe destroy your children. I think the fact that this woman was not with his parent, with with his with her kids, could have could have sent some some red flags to Adam but I don't know what life is I don't know I don't know what what made what really happened that she he did not feel the need to like have to think this is all I had for you guys for today thank you for being here thank you for subscribing for liking for sharing and for everything I, I appreciate the support very much guys please keep subscribing keep sharing keep liking and don't forget to leave the comment down below on how I did on this video. Am I getting better or worse? Please assist me so that I know what to do next and what not to do next. Mwah. Ciao.